Jacksonville storms the field. The Dolphins have pulled the upset, defeating number three, Duke. Nolan takes the contact, bounces off, it takes the shot, and delivers once again for Jacksonville. Shot and a goal right as that man down expires. So Jacksonville gets a pair of goals on the man up. all around for this Jacksonville team. They came in and they, they answered the moment. Oh man, uh, anarchy. Uh, you know, everybody talks about the fire hose analogy of, of getting a first head coaching job. What they don't tell you is that there's no answer. You're overwhelmed, but you're also creating solutions on the fly. You know, it's, it's no secret that I was never the best ball stopper. You know, my goal and, and continues to be as a coach is I want to be the best leader and teammate I could have ever been. And that includes leading players now, but when I think back to my experience and playing with Joel White and Thomas Guadagnolo and Steven Keogh and then all the amazing guys that we had in that locker room, I, I don't want to skip any. We never talked about wins and losses. We never talked about the championship. We talked about the daily expectation of one another. I often think about you know my career and, and what, what legacy I could leave and it, it's never going to be the best goalie but could people talk about me if I, they were given my eulogy and say man that guy he showed up. He showed up every day. What was it like for you when you got the nod to come down here and coach? It was a little bit of a leap if I'm coming with full disclosure. I was a head coach of a Division III program uh, that I loved up in central Pennsylvania. Coach Galway shoots me a text in early August and then I was like, ah, I'm shooting my shot. And so I just said, I'd be interested to see what you're growing down there as well. Flew me down, talked about this building, met with the athletic director, talked to President Cost, met with current players, and then what we are continued to have at this university as they invest in athletics is uh, what I came down to be a part of. You know, I got a chance to play against Coach Galloway as a player, and it started then, honestly, Mitch. He was so good. He was so talented. His compete level was like the best part about it. You know, he was so fiery and net. He made saves that were tough saves, but also was, was a big time leader down there. Just being here to, to create the culture and the program we have now, and I'm very blessed to, to be a part of it. You know, I'm very grateful that, you know, he went through the interview process with me this summer, and, and now I'm, I'm seeing it firsthand, you know, and, and, and he's the real deal. It's just the only way to put it. Being the only Division I lacrosse program in Florida, a young staff, and hungry players, Jacksonville is destined to put their name on the map. They have the beaches, they have the weathers, but do they have what it takes? Let's find out. One of the main reasons I decided to come here was really just because not only was it close to home, but the coaching staff here is, is really, really awesome. I mean, Coach Galloway, Coach P, like they're amazing people. And whenever I went on my official, like the guys that I met and the people here and the teammates are really, really great people. Main reason was definitely Galloway. I love like where, where it was at the time. You know, we were like an underdog program. Nobody really knew much about us. I didn't know much about Jacksonville. Being a part of something, you know, of creating that new culture, uh, bringing Jacksonville into uprising and like being able to be a part of that instead of joining a program who's like already at the top and everyone wants to go there and just going somewhere else and creating a new top-notch program where everyone wants to go. I never even had heard of Jacksonville but decided to come down for a visit and met the coaches, met the guys, saw how sweet the area that all the guys lived and kind of just fell in love with it. Right after I remember getting back on the plane I was like yeah I think I'm going to Jacksonville. And in transition go the Dolphins. And a very long pass leads to a long goal for the Dolphins. What's it like getting to coach alongside John Galloway? So that was more of a relationship out of like respect from afar that's grown into a, a professional, like him challenging me, me doing my best to support and challenge him. And uh, year four, it's like, it's getting to the point where we're kind of finishing each other's sentences. It's a little scary. We're all making this what it needs to be like for our guys. Like we're at a whole different threshold of the type of athlete that we think we can bring down and make this an opportunity for. Ready, go, go. Chest up field, top hand light. Better Nick. Good, good, yes Nick! God damn it, we gotta make this so fucking routine that you're gonna love this in your sleep. We need to be organized on versus attack motion. Big Dodge is coming with you. Now don't touch him, Darminio. Don't be caught in no man's land. It's the best part of my day. Crash approaches, you have support, more support underneath. That's okay, touch him, pop! That was great fucking crash approach D. You put two more bodies that they're gonna give us a blitz opportunity? That was my favorite rep of the day. Not bad. Good job. Davis! Great fucking decision. TD, step up. There you go. Hulk, good. Nice fucking job, Jack. Smash time. Smash time. Ah, shallot. Hammer time. Yes. 
Nice f***ing read. Will, take your time in the rack. In general, read what they're doing. We need you guys to be scorers on the pipes. F*** the motion. What's it like being coached by John Galloway? It's awesome. Just knowing like where he has been in his career and then like learning and getting all the knowledge that you can from someone that has been so accomplished in the lacrosse world. It's just awesome being coached by him and learning as much as I can from him. He's hard on us, but like as a head coach, you have to be hard on your guys. He's only hard on you because he, he knows how much it takes to win. He's won big games before in his career. He wants to win and he understands that and he's just trying to make us better at the end of the day. And we're gonna, you know, get W's because of that. Along with the beaches and weather, their facilities are state of the art. Let's take a look. My name is Jacob Greiner. I'm number 28 on the Jacksonville men's lacrosse team. We're here at the Rock Lacrosse Center and I'm gonna take you through Jacksonville men's lacrosse's facilities. Yeah, so coming in the front door here, this is our lobby. They got my high school highlight, uh, Riverside. Uh, the, the yearbook never dies. But coming here, uh, we have what, what, men's and women's? Men's on this side, women's locker rooms on that side. This is kind of a common area where both teams can hang out, watch TV, do Come homework. Over here, we have uh, four. <laughs> Who put this on? <laughs> Definitely uh, damn man. Anthony Caputo right there, number 22, by far the most excited about hearing about you. Oh, yes, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hey, I got a text from my guy, Matt Caputo, the fellow Italian. How you doing? Yes, sir. I'm doing good, man. Good I'm to good. see you. know yeah. that the Caputo, as we call it, the Caputo crimson chin runs in the family. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of people tell me I have a protruding chin, and it, it brings out the jawline, all right? No, you look good, though. You look good. Who's like somebody you would you'd keep away from, <laughs> from your daughter? Tucker Garrity. <laughs> 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 Who's somebody you would let date your daughter? Daniel May. Daniel wow, May. wow, good wow. call. What's this vibe like in here midday after practice, before practice? Yeah, it's awesome. We all lift like early in the mornings, at least some days in the week, and then we have practice in the afternoon. We get real close because we're literally just hanging out all day here for four or five, six hours, just watching TV, busting guys' balls and stuff like that, yeah. so it's great. So we got women's down there, and then we have the film room. What's a film? session like after a win or a loss with Coach Galloway? <laughs> Two very different things I'd say right there for the most part. We definitely, we're in here a lot, get a lot better in here. I mean, it's no secret how important film is for yeah. every sport, especially lacrosse. Do you have your set and stone spot? Oh yeah, I've only sat in this thing the past two years. Really, right the yeah. past two yeah. years, and who, who are the neighbors? Tucker Garrity is right there, and okay. Davis Smith. And Coach Galloway obviously probably breaks into film. What are a couple one-liners you know <laughs> he's gonna rip up here? Uh, we used to do this all the time. All right. Goes. <laughs> really? I Every time that. he starts a session with check in and we, everyone says all in. So guys will come in and say that and you know, trick people that coach is walking in when he's not. But, but those that. are his lines. How cool is it being the only Division One lacrosse school in Florida? Our guys live at the beach all day, every day, and then go to class and you know, do practices and stuff. So it's a pretty great deal where, you know, I'm down here and it's, you know, I went back home for the weekend and it was rainy and it stunk in New York and down here it's 80 and sunny like every day. So it's kind of ideal if you just like that weather, which who doesn't, you know? Pretty nice down here, it's awesome. It's extremely unique. Not only is it, is it cool in the sense of just, you know, we get to talk about that as a, as, a, as a staff, as a recruiting tool, but just being a part of it down here. To see the sport grow, not only in the South, but in the state of Florida, it, it's really cool. It, it's a unique thing to see it here, you know, in person, you know, for, from the time I've been here in August, uh, I take pride in that, just from being from the South. It's pretty sweet. It's definitely something that's super unique. You know, just being in Florida definitely adds a lot of value. You know, again, like the weather is really nice. And so just aspects like that, it can definitely make it easier for guys to make, make their decision. It's integral for us. You know, we talk about, you see it when you walk in the facility with the windscreens and then you walk in the building and the first signage you see is lacrosse capital of the South. And is that a little bit of big dreaming? Absolutely. But that's exactly what we want when our guys walk into our facility. And we want to kind of plant our flag as, hey, if you're interested in playing in the South or if you want to represent the South, if you're one of the best players in the state, this is the only place that you can say you can do that. And to be able to create an atmosphere where people come and watch lacrosse games, even if maybe they, they have never seen a game before. And that's what we've created in North Florida and that's what we have to build on. Real quick, we can stop in. This is the study room. Oh, okay. So if guys are really needed to focus, you got a test or something, you can interview, you can close the door in here. Here we go, look at this. And oh, then uh, another cool little thing is all these notes on the wall are from alumni in the past, kind of writing. How lacrosse got them ready for like the real world, oh, what they're cool. doing now. What's up guys, Ethan Dirk here. We're over here at the David College of Business. We're gonna take you guys to Accounting 201. Let's go. What's up, fellas? We're in class now, working on our projects. Um, this is an annual report project in accounting here. 
we get to choose our company, it's basically going through the financial sheets and balance sheets and all that and answering questions on them. And we got Nikki here, he's with me, he's doing two questions. Robert here, he's doing two questions too, and we're just kind of going down the list and making sure we all get it in. Oof. <laughs> I mean, we got, we got a pretty solid group, so I'm, we're hoping yeah. for an A+. Plus. A+, plus is the goal. Troy Hedinger, uh, captain last year of our team. Unbelievable athlete, one of my best friends. Shout out, Troy. Coach's office is down here. Coach Coppins right here. New offensive coordinator, the man, Coach P, and Coach Galloway at the end there. Down there. What's it like sitting on that couch uh, in that office? Me and Coach Galloway have a great, great relationship. And I mean, he's so approachable off the field. He's great, so it's not too intimidating down in that office unless you did something bad. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Favorite room in this place. So this is where we get ready before every practice and every game. Two lines down, guys will hang out. The lockers are nice. You throw the helmets up on top, sometimes cleats too. Up yeah. here, guys can, there's like phone chargers in there and stuff. Guys can put whatever they want up there, it locks. Gloves and elbow pads behind the panels hanging up there. Guys throw their sticks. Check out how Ozzy's look. Oh, uh, this is inside. Not bad, pretty empty, pretty empty. This is just practice clothes for Ozzy. Um, and then down here, just Shoes, cleats, shoulder pads. That's pretty much how everyone sets it up. In your eyes is the messiest guy in this locker room. Marshall McGuire, easily, hands down. On one of these lockers down here, look at all the shit he's got piled up there. <laughs> Last room here is our recovery room. So a little fridge here that's sometimes filled with food, foam rollers, little training table. And then these kind of seats, which guys will take naps during the day or whatever. And then we have the Norma Tech booths. And then new addition, which is pretty sweet, Fresh Blend smoothie machine. So guys will come in after lift or practice, get a smoothie made, which you can get like kind of any kinds. That machine's pretty cool. So that's brand new this year. We're here, Williams Hall. I'm gonna show you guys how the underclassmen live on the Jacksonville men's lacrosse team. Let's do it. Welcome to the crib. I'm George Cecil, number 49. Nick Zemos, number 21. This is our crib. My side's a little more plain Jane, got the Ohio flag. Shout Ohio out. boy, where are yeah. you from? Columbus. Columbus? Shout what out high school? 614, Olin Tangy. Olin Tangy. Oh. Liberty, was that like... <laughs> no, the original, not Liberty. Oh. That's our rival. <laughs> That's our rival. That's <laughs> where we hit the books, get a little PS4 action together. What's the game? Chell and uh, a little Spider-Man. We got yep. the fridge right here. What do yeah. we got in the fridge? We got some Arizona tea, a little protein shake. You got it all. Some, some slabs of cheese. <laughs> we have the closet over here. Oh yeah, we got the closet. What was, what was uh, Halloween? Oh, we're the Riddler. Wow, the Riddler. <laughs> the Riddler. <laughs> we're we're Riddler. Your side now. My side's got more color to it. Huge Spider-Man fan. I got the workspace right here, so we'll get homework done late nights. So yeah, just definitely a lot more color. I got the world is yours, Al Pacino. Okay. <laughs> you can't leave it out. I no. saw it first thing in here. I love that. Do you have a girlfriend no. outfit on date night? What is it? Show, show the fans. Look at you styling and profiling. Wow, folks. This is not like a t-shirt. This is like a, a, a sweater t-shirt. I like this. Something yeah. different. I like rocks like this. Keep it interesting, simple, interesting. Please. You have a cutie you want to give a shout out to? It's my mom. Oh, really okay. good guy. Shout out my mom too. <laughs> <laughs> Nikki Brown, number 14. I'm an attackman. I'm gonna show you how the dolphins live off campus. Bam, just like that. Here we oh, are. What does Duval even mean? If I'm a, just an Italian kid watching YouTube, <laughs> what does Duval mission mean? Duval is the county that oh, oh, okay. Us, okay. And it's our mission. Just be the best that we can possibly be. We're in Duval County in Florida. And what we do here is the brand we represent isn't just in this building. It's not just on this campus. It's actually amongst the community. So our guys volunteer, you know, a bunch of youth lacrosse events. We make sure we're doing things the right way. You know, our guys are reading to youth students and, and you know, during the week. Um, we're involving them on our game day rituals and routines, having them come to campus, having them be a part of what we're doing. So I think the Duval mission is a, is a brand mission that's not just about us, it's about everyone else around us and helping the sport of lacrosse be recognized, but also Jacksonville University men's and women's lacrosse be recognized. It's an inclusiveness that's not just our team, it's um, who's around us and, and who we want to be a part of our family as well. So I'd say that's what it means. What do we got on TV? What do we, we got any Mitchell Pelkey YouTube right. ever going here? We do, we actually Ooh, do well, something. Like then weekends, we obviously have football up here. We Usually always football, football. up here. We kind of got some uh, decorations as we come this way. Hey, give me two guys that, oh, that should sit here. It's like time out for them. Anthony Caputo. Trey, Trey Arnau. We keep going here. We got the kitchen. Yeah. Who, who does most of the cooking in here? Braden. 
Braden, mm -hmm. Braden does all the cooking. I love that, yeah. Sure. What is so, he like as a roommate? He's good, he's clean. He actually cooks for all of us, so. Wow. Yeah. Man. He also cuts hair, his, folks. So Dirk actually ordered this for me. Wow, 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 wow. We got some clubs here. Yep. Obviously being down in Florida. Beach access, don't want a beach, don't want to go fishing, play some golf. Of course. Who's the best course. golfer on the team? It's gotta be Davis Smith, I believe. Really? I think it's Davis Smith. Oh, yeah. We got the backyard. This is nice for, for the state of Florida. So we've kind of seen the lay of the land. Now we gotta check out the rooms. Cool. Let's we'll start with yours first. Sure. Uh, we walk right by Braden's. We should start with Braden's. No, let's start with yours. Let's start with yours. <laughs> first door on the right. This is my room. We got everything on the walls, as you can see. And we got the longboard in the corner. Longboard. We got the longboard. So, like, so the closet's right here. This is actually where the fans have been waiting for. <sighs> Santini comes to Jayville. What's the outfit you're busting out? Jag shirt. It's Jag shirt. Very, very nice shirt. I like that. Uh, these are all my classes, classes. and. You uh, smartest guy in the house? I'm up there. No. And yes. No. That is probably. so right. I feel like you should put this on. Man, this I was thing a hippie. smells. You gotta put it on. Heinous. <laughs> How do I look? <laughs> you look great. You should keep wearing that. We can head down the hall and next uh, room. What do we got? Next room. We'll go on the right. This is this is my fellow Dirk. This looks nice. Georgia will probably play Ohio State in the college football playoffs. Who do you think is gonna win? Georgia. Ohio State. You don't you think Georgia's gonna win? Yeah. All right. Uh, Next room. This okay. Is we got another room. Okay. Well, we got something on the walls here. Folks. Yeah. We got pictures oh, of his oh, yeah. parents down here. And we got one more room. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We got to show you Braden's room. This is nice. Oh, yeah. Folks. Watch watch your yeah, step. Yeah, watch your step. You're kind of the stylistic cat here. Some guys have already mentioned you're the best dressed on the team. Do you think so yourself? Oh, uh, yeah. I mean, I have some pretty good clothes. You know? Yeah. I can put together a good fit when every once in a while when I need to. Another cool thing we're about to do, uh, since we are in the state of Florida, mm -hmm. you guys own a boat. We do. Dirk. Dirk owns a boat. Look, he's got the whole outfit on. <laughs> <laughs> he's he's so that. ready. The only Division One lacrosse team that can go on a boat and hit the beach on an off day. Jacksonville men's lacrosse, baby. We got the boat going into the water, baby. Let's hop on the boat and have a blast. Here we go, look at it. Thing is smoke, why is smoking so much? <laughs> so right here on the left is our fishing spot, right in the corner of this grass line right here. It was low tide and we just absolutely killed it. I think we each caught like what, two or three redfish, some flounder. Do you guys would stay here after college or when you go back? Stay here for sure. Really? One of the coolest things with like Jacksonville too is that our alumni stay around the area. Yeah. I mean, it, they're everywhere. I'll tell you what, this boat, I've put it through the ringer and it does not, it will not give in on me. Really? It will not. That's You're a little cool. worried over there. Yeah, I was. You're a little worried. The alums here, whether they graduated this past May or on the 2010 team, like they're around. Like Jacksonville people love Jacksonville. I'm bitten by the bug a little bit too, but like they come, they stay, they enjoy, they love it. It's becoming a growing tradition with every class that graduates because seven out of 10 will get their first job down here. It's a great place to live. And seeing that young alumni base have the energy it puts into this while only being 30 to 32 years old or the oldest guys is just pretty special. Monday nights at Tony P's, it's a place called Tony Pepperoni's, you just call it Tony P's. And they sell dollar slices and uh, dollar sodas. I really like, honestly, the end of practice shout outs. I think it's good, like sometimes guys are down in practice, they get a shout out and it's, you know, it does lift them up. And it, boys are pretty happy about it at the end, so. Something we do really cool is the uh, the Beach Olympics. You know, we start the year at the beach, right? So it's like, we don't hide from where we are. You know, we're excited that, you know, Jacksonville Beach is, is right near us. You know, our guys live there. It's pretty fun, it's entertaining, it's competitive. They've been doing it for, for a long time now, and you know, I, I, I was just excited to be a part of it this year. We're out here at the beach. The best part about the Jacksonville men's lacrosse team, we're here, this is what they do, probably four to five times a week, come out here, get these Italian bodies tan. I'm gonna show you guys what goes on at the beach. We got the football, we got spike ball, we got the water. Let's get into it. Brayden Harrison, number 29, midfielder. Interviews, let's do it. Let's do it. What's the biggest difference from Pittsburgh to Jacksonville Beach, Florida? Look around, man. You don't got this in Pittsburgh. What's your favorite part about being here? The boys. Who's your least favorite roommate? <laughs> <laughs> Nikki Brown. Yeah, least Nikki favorite Brown. roommate, Nikki Brown by a mile. Who's your least favorite roommate? I'm gonna have to double it up. Nikki Brown, definitely. Least favorite, and who smells the worst? Least favorite, <laughs> I'm gonna have to say Quinn. He's got that Duval Ooh. stank. There we go. I think Dirk got that Duval <laughs> stank. <laughs> Dirk got that. How about right. uh, Maddie Santini just bought him cologne because he smelled too bad. Yeah, she just burned that. <laughs> Who gets the most girls in the house? Dirk. Dirk, Dirk, Dirk. gets the most girls. Dirk is the Rizzler. <laughs> I've been on a pretty dry streak recently, guys. I just want a hug. <laughs>
So I have been informed that you do know Mitch. You've known him for a little bit. Yeah, we have some years together. We started on uh, eighth grade, Sweet Lax National League classes. So in a one-on-one, -on -one, since you are a pull and he was an offensive midfielder, who's winning? I'll go five and five, you know, just because shot. Split even? Boy. Yeah, yeah, I can't I can't say that. Who yeah. gets more girls? I bet Pelkey's got some game. Who gets more girls? Pelkey or Shallot? Shallot. Shallot. How many reps he's taking versus how many times you're taking him to the rack? Seven. Out of ten. What'd you say? I said five and five split down the middle. What is your go-to? If you're taking a girl on first date, are you cooking her a meal or are you going to take her out? I'm a cook. My man, I called him actually. We were trying to plan this video and he goes, yo, I can't pick up the phone right now. I'm on a date. How did it go? It went well. We know who this girl is. I'm not going to put it on. Give her a shout out. On national television. Give her a shout, out. shout out my mother. Shout out Maria Shallot. No, Maria Costa now. My parents just got divorced. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> What's your favorite part about Jacksonville so far, Chris? Probably the beach. Who is the worst dress? Who has the worst style? Jack Lovelace, for sure. I mean. Well, out of the freshman class, who does not wear deodorant? George Cecil, for sure. What's your favorite food spot down here in Jacksonville so far? Got to be Angie Subs. We're here at Angie's, staple of the Jacksonville men's across. And we're gonna show the Pelicanator how it's done. Yep, what do you get? What do you get here? The big Doug Peterson. Shout out the Jags. Let's do it. So Angie's, great sub place. We come here all the time. It's actually five dollar subs after uh, six dollar subs after six. Mm. Best thing ever. Full well, sub. Good thing it's one o'clock. Yeah, yeah. It's all right. Welcome to the office. We're here at the office. This is actually the uh, Jacksonville men's lacrosse spot. Like, no one's allowed to sit here, right? Yeah, Except it's us. only us. 44 ounces of DP for the fellas. Oh, yeah, you have to. <laughs> All of one goal. No <laughs> way. Yeah, you're good. <laughs> Sammy's on the table. Give you guys a little unboxing. You, your boy got the dirty gringo. This thing looks serious. Whole wheat. Got to keep the six pack. We got some Cheetos on there. Wow, look at that. Look at that. Wow, folks. Dirty gringo. Shout out to the fans. Dude, this is really good. No, I'm just saying that. Wow, wow. folks. Do you hear the crunch on that The bread? crunch is serious here. Where's the future of Coach Galloway? Is it in Jacksonville or is it back up in the East? Yeah, it's a great question. I, I get this from recruits a lot, and I think we've made it abundantly clear it's Jacksonville. People have this constant nature, especially in our industry, of what's what's on the other side. And I have to do a good job, especially to those around me, to pull the curtains back and say, life is pretty darn good. We have a supportive AD. Uh, our president is involved in athletics. He played here at, at baseball. He's from Syracuse. He knows the value of lacrosse. You know, one of the things he first said to me was, when you grew up, all you saw was Syracuse and Johns Hopkins t-shirts. We're starting to see Jacksonville lacrosse shirts around town. That was part of our goal, part of just like our wins and losses. We have people that care about lacrosse here. And sometimes it is a little bit of understanding what's important to you and your family and your quality of life. And my wife, our daughter, who we just had six months ago, this is home. This is home right now. And um, you, know, you have to be able to pull the Curtains back to show how enjoyable this place has been and, and how good it's been to us. How does a recruit not come here? <laughs> I agree. When I'm coming down here, I think the same thing. I think I think it's a really cool spot to be as a recruit. Like you get the area, you get the weather, you get the great coaching staff. We have the facilities. Like I agree. I think we should ask recruits the same thing. I mean, the beach, the facilities, the program, everyone on the team, the coaches. It's it's hard not to come and look down here and definitely make a decision to come here. I don't know. It's pretty ideal. We're up and coming, we, we're winning games, we're getting a comp more competitive schedule, we're getting better, we're getting more notice. And it's a place where we're a, a tier one sport on campus here, you know. Lacrosse is really at the top, so you get all the resources as uh, any Power 5 schools, lacrosse program or sports. So now, especially being in it, it's pretty hard to think why you wouldn't want to come here versus some other schools. With every resource in the book, some might say the aspect they're missing is taking a step on the field. Will Jacksonville make the tournament this year? <laughs> uh, yes, we will. It's the plan, I hope so. Yeah, yeah, for sure. We better, we better. <laughs> That's our goal every year. I'm gonna quote exactly what my dad hates. I don't know, I don't know if we're any good or not, but I know that this fall, 
I have loved our group. We have had the best weight room improvements I've seen in different institutions here this fall. We have like a no bitch, just do what you need to do so that we're better next week. A lot of good things going down here. The beginning of our season that starts taking care of business right now. You know, we have a saying, it's called WTD. You know, win the day. You start, you compete, and you finish every single day. And, and I got a saying to the offense, it's called pebbles to the pile, right? Small little pebbles you throw on a pile, it doesn't, you don't see very much right away, right? But eventually those pebbles start to rise and it becomes pretty big and you start to see the work and you know, we're trying to build the right, the right mountain at the right time. And we're gonna bring, up, bring those pebbles every single, every single day and you know, honestly see what happens. We'll be really good at practice this Monday. And I have to stay true to the messaging that we've given our guys and, and that we as coaches have to believe. Our goals are to play deep into May. How do you do that? You create a culture that's going to be able to sustain you for days like that first Saturday in May, and, and we have to stick to that because it ultimately is going to get us over that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Hundred percent. We're going to make it. How do you guys keep beating Duke? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I keep, I mean, every season is different. Guys just show up and we just, those have been two of the most fun games of my career, so. Game planning and just grit. Through game plan and strategy, like intensity and just playing super, super hard. There's no secret sauce. You have certain players make certain plays. Like we're relatively overlooked, I think, in aspects still lacrosse being kind of a new program. So they take that to heart and really battling. So being Duke gets everyone on notice. It's like, oh man, they're for real. And I think the guys like that, so. It's the family thing. When they play Duke, it seems to me that, you know, everything is, is buttoned up. They have a readiness. They have a what's next. They have a, a contingency plan if things don't go right, right? So number one, it's Coach Janowski's humility to play us. He doesn't and realize how much that's impacted not only our program but the sport down here. The second piece of that I think is, is belief. You, know, you have to be a little bit insane to, to believe that you're going to win those games and uh, we've tried to create a little bit of that insanity in, in the spring.